Well, on August 25th of last year, I'll be honest with you, we almost lost Latrice Curry. And since that time, many of you have asked, what exactly happened to her? Well, now for the first time, you'll hear the answers from Latrice, her family, and her friends. blood clot. Um, that Sunday morning, you see, I was getting ready for church, um, and um, the next thing I know uh, that I remember, I was on my kitchen floor, uh, looking up the ceiling was spinning. I was like, okay, I was trying to get my bearings, and uh, thankfully, my cell phone was right there. And I reached and I called my, uh, one of my very good friends, Deidre, and I said, Dee, I said, I'm not sure what's going on. I said, the room's spinning, and um, then after that, I'm not sure what else I said to her. Um, but um, she kept me on the phone, and uh, she called 911. Latrice called me that Sunday morning. Uh, we were uh, getting ready for church. Uh, we had a program uh, at our church uh, involving our sorority, and when I got the call, I really couldn't understand what she was saying. Um, I knew it was her because her name popped up on my phone, um, but she was saying, help me, and I, I didn't realize I couldn't even make out uh, what was going on. And I remember asking her again, I said, Latrice, is it Latrice? I just kept calling her name and she kept saying, help me. Deidre said that she'd call 911. So I remember her telling me that in my ear. And I don't know how, but I remember I somehow managed to get from my, I couldn't walk, but I managed to somehow get to my door. I remember leaving the door open um, and unlocking it because I knew EMT would be there and I would not probably, maybe not be able to get up and open the door. You know, they could always bust it in, but I remember somehow I opened the door and I remember somebody grabbing my hand and touching my face and saying, Latrice, Latrice, stay with me. Um, and then the next thing I remember, I'm in the ambulance. Um, by that time, um, I remember the, the first maybe two or three minutes in the ambulance um, and nothing else for probably over three weeks. Within minutes, she was admitted to the hospital's critical care unit and the news was not good. Doctors told Latrice's friends she was the sickest patient in the hospital. And seeing how really, really sick she was and knowing that we need to call her dad. And I remember mm -hmm. that phone call, making that call to her dad, yeah. which was very hard, you know, but we knew that he needed to, he's, he's in Nashville. He and she said, Mr. Curry, you need to get up here quick. Latrice is real sick. We don't know what it is. We're rushing her to the hospital. This happened on Sunday, August the 25th, my wife had passed on Monday, August the 27th, the previous year. And I told God, I said, hey, God, you can't do this to me. I can't take it. So when we got in, um, we, they told us what had transpired, the condition that she was in, what they had already done, and it was just something that I couldn't fathom, and I started praying. As the weeks went on and Latrice regained consciousness, the presence of her dad made a huge difference in her recovery. He was up and down that highway. He was in the hospital with me every day, and it was like clockwork. And the nurses said they could tell, they were like, Latrice, you look for your dad every day. And if he was late, he would say, where's my dad? Almost like a child, where's my dad? Um, you know, and they were like, Latrice, he's going to be here. You know, and they would even tell me one day he had to run an errand, but he said he's on his way. And just that sense of peace and of calm that it gave me when he walked in the room, you know, 
He's a rock. He's a rock. Eventually, she was able to do physical rehab. She worked hard, exceeding what therapists asked her to do. Every day, um, I said, you know what? I'm getting out of here. I just kept saying that. I just kept saying that. Every day, I'm going home. I'm getting back. I'm getting my life back. I saw a real miracle. I remember her crying, and I said, Latrice, why are you crying? She said, well, Dad, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. So I hugged her, and we prayed, and I said, God's going to, I said, he's brought you this far. I said, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. He's going to take care of you. And she smiled, and I never saw her cry again. I think that when people talk about and say miracles and they look at me and if there was ever any doubt in your mind about miracles, you're looking at a walking, living, breathing miracle. And you know, as you know, there were with the cards and every card in there said, Latrice, I'm praying for you. Everywhere I go, when I go out in the store, Latrice, I prayed for you. One person even stopped me in an aisle of the grocery store and said, do you mind if we just pray right here quickly? And I said, sure. And I told everyone that said that, and I've seen, I said, believe me, I said, I felt each and every prayer. I said, I felt all of those well wishes and that support. And I said, and I hope that one of the things that truly can come out of this is that, yes, I'm one example, but when you hear about other scenario situations and no matter what's going on in your personal life or your family, I want you to dig deep down and that same belief, that same prayer that you sent for me, let's send up for them as well. And I hope I continue to be a blessing and to uh, continue to do a good job for our viewers and for um, Channel 3 and just to continue do, doing what I was doing to uh, continue telling the stories of people here in the Tennessee Valley.